Hi, welcome to our winter webinar series. Today we're talking about life after St. Anne's. And we're here with two of our um, faculty and staff members to talk about the high school placement process. Um, I'm happy to be able to introduce to you Jill Riley and Renee Shadowin. And I'm going to actually start with Jill and have Jill talk uh, just briefly about your role here at St. Anne's. Okay, hello everybody. Um, as you can see, I'm the assistant head of uh, school for faculty development and student growth. Basically what that means is I oversee the education program um, from preschool to grade eight. That includes students and teachers and families. Great, and Renee, can you tell us about your role as well? Yes, so my role here at St. Anne's is to manage projects really in support of the education experience of our students. Um, and my primary focus is to ensure that students and faculty have what they need to have a highly successful um, school year. So that's it. Great, thank you. So today, as I said, we're gonna talk about the high school placement process. St. Anne's is a preschool age three through eighth grade school. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about what happens when you come to the end of your time at St. Anne's. Can you talk to us about the high school application process and um, is there anything different about it now that we're in this pandemic? Yeah, well, those are good questions. Um, I think we'll see that we're gonna answer a lot of questions along the way about the high school process itself. And, um, but I wanna address whether or not it's different in a pandemic, because in some ways, the high school process is exactly the same as what it was before. And in other ways, it's just a little bit different. I would say it's modified or shifted just to meet the needs of these challenges. So um, the way it's the same is that you and your, your children can still find information on school admissions pages, those high school admissions pages. And that's the best place to find admissions information, information about financial aid and scholarships and those kinds of things, in addition to all the details about the school. Online applications and hard copies are still accepted. You could scan them or there'll be an electronic uh, process that you can follow from the school. It's actually, we've had those before and they continue on. And then the application timelines are generally the same. Now, a school might change from one year to the next, but usually it's, it's just about the same. And again, the best information comes from the school themselves. And then the same thing is true about financial aid and scholarship processes. I will say that it's not the same for every school that your child will apply to. So different high schools have different processes and their websites and their admissions folks are the very best sources for that. Now, in other ways, the process is a little bit different with COVID. Um, uh, the schools our students are applying to have limited shadow days. So in the past, our kids have been able to go and shadow any number of schools that they want to. Um, some schools are not allowing shadows and have virtual tours and meetings. Some schools are allowing shadowing days, but it's limited. Uh, that's again, a school uh, preference, but also what they're, what they're able to do. So that's something that you'd wanna check into. And uh, in the past, uh, schools have had large, sometimes multiple open houses. And with COVID, some of that has shifted a bit. Uh, the same thing is true for us with people looking at us. And let's see, we have converted pretty much anything that was an in-person event that had lots of people gathering. We've, we have converted those to either a virtual event this year or an outdoor event so that we still have them. They still serve the same purpose and the same groups of people, students and families. Uh, they're just done a little bit differently. And then uh, testing for students that are interested in going into charter schools, independent schools, boarding schools, um, sometimes public schools, it just depends on the program they're going to, there, there are extra testing requirements and some of those have had to shift. Um, online tests have gone virtual and at home and then um, some of the schools do their testing just a little bit different, differently. So again, checking with the schools on what exactly they need is all part of the, this process from before, but also pre-COVID and um, during COVID. So, and likely to stay post COVID if I had to think about it. Um, okay. Uh, I'm wondering if you can talk to us about when students and parents should start looking at high school options. Do they wait till their eighth grade year? Should it happen before then? 
So um, what we recommend is that our students start early. Um, our middle school begins in fifth grade here at St. Anne's. So in fifth and sixth grade, we encourage those students to attend our spring um, high school fair, where um, we set up a place in the school where um, we may have, you know, 10 to 15 schools uh, with tables, all of their brochures out. And it's really a great opportunity um, for them to just kind of um, quickly meet with several representatives and get an idea for what kind of school they might like to attend, um, you know, down the road once they're ready to move on to high school. So uh, what we, we recommend, we love, of course, we want our seventh and eighth graders to attend as well. And they really are the, the ones that are probably going to get the most out of it. But when we say start early, that's really what, what we mean is just having them just go through, spend an hour and um, just visit the schools, collect information. And that's really it. For our seventh and eighth graders, uh, we really recommend that they start attending open houses um, and taking tours during the spring of their seventh grade year. And that really continues into the fall of their eighth grade year. Um, and we also encourage students and families to research potential schools before visiting and talking with school representatives. And they can take a look at the school's websites, like we mentioned earlier, and also talk to current students. Um, they can reach out to um, different alum families and really just kind of get a sense for what they're liking about their current high school. I think that's a great suggestion. And I know our families are eager and happy to talk about their experiences to share with our current families as well. So as these students look and the families look at other options, um, where do most students go to after St. Anne's? And I do have a slide here um, with a list of uh, many of the high schools and colleges that our alums have attended. But can you talk a little bit about the different types of schools that kids have sure. gone to? Sure, yep. Our, our students, our, our graduates are successful at a variety of schools in a variety of locations. And it really depends on what their needs and desires are. And by needs and desires, that can be everything from something that a student's interested in to perhaps uh, in, in school, uh, interest in an academic interest, but also there could be an outside sports interest or an outside arts interest that, that they're interested in. So lots of different kinds of schools. Our kids from the list, you'll see they, they attend public schools and charter schools and independent schools and parochial schools, boarding schools, co-ed, uh, single sex, uh, military schools, all sorts of, uh, all sorts of schools are, are out there, local and, and more distant um, for students to look at that will, that will be their, their best fit. And that's really how we encourage uh, students and families to think about it. Like what is gonna be your next best fit school um, as you enter high school. Great, thank you. And I'm, I'm glad you spoke to um, the different types of independent schools versus public schools, as I know that's a common question that we get as well. How does St. Anne's help the parents navigate through this process and, and the students as well? Okay, um, so there's lots of things that we have set in place and it's definitely a partnership between the school and the family, and then it's also a triangle from the student to the parent to the school. Um, and that, the strength of a triangle is, is very well known, and we lean into that for this process. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of go chronologically. So in this, as Renee mentioned, in the spring, we have a spring high school fair that we invite um, students and families from any age that they can attend. That's specifically aimed at our seventh graders um, and our, um, pardon me, our rising eighth graders who we would consider seventh graders and sixth graders to look, but really anybody can show up to be there. And there are lots of schools that come every year. It's a little bit different, although we do have lots of repeat schools. And often those school representatives will bring students with them so that students have a chance to talk to other students about their experience, which is really helpful. And it kind of allows you to shop around. It's a little like window shopping when it doesn't cost you anything yet. Um, and I mean that from a decision-making, not necessarily a financial standpoint, but students sometimes can feel pressure, especially as eighth graders in their eighth grade year, but as seventh graders, 
they feel more free to open up their thoughts about what they might want to do later on. Um, also in the spring, specifically for our seventh graders, they t they we will set up, and typically this happens. Last year with em emergency remote learning was a little bit different. This year we'll, we'll definitely set it up, whether it's virtual or outside. We'll have them have a chance to talk with boarding school um, admissions representatives. And that's not because we're trying to um, you know, dissuade them from going to a public school or a local school or force them into a public, uh, into a boarding school. It's because those boarding school admissions representatives do this all the time in lots of different states with lots of different students from all around the world. And they, they allow our students to ask them lots of questions about the admission process in general. And they also do mock interviews with our students, which is really helpful because they interview the admissions folks in, interview so many different kinds of kids from so many different walks of life. And um, that is a really, a really helpful um, event for our, for our seventh graders. In September, uh, families likely do a lot of homework over the week, over the summer. And that's not something we direct, although I have had, and Mr. Davis, our head of school, have had people come in and speak with us if they have questions about local schools or about the process, we invite any families to come in any number of times that they want to. Um, that can happen over the summer. And in the fall, uh, around the same time uh, that school starts, so just a few weeks after that, we kind of kickstart the process back again with our eighth grade families and, um, and meet whatever needs they have and kind of get them going, remind them about what the fall will look like for admissions for school and give them some ideas of when good times to tour would be or visit days or um, our registrar works with us. She helps with all the paperwork and submission of materials and documents and she'll be there at that meeting to help. And she is available at any time to help our families just at the end of a phone call or at the end of an email. Um, just check out my notes here to make sure I got everything on here. Um, Again, so that's for, those are be our eighth graders. In each November, we host, um, we invite about five or six admissions representatives from the local schools, um, including our public schools and our vocational schools in. This year, it was a virtual event. And um, seventh and eighth grade were there for the information session and the question and answer session as a group. Then our seventh graders went back to class and our eighth grade stayed online and broke out into small groups and got to talk with three other three separate schools of their of their choice just to ask questions about the admissions process. Again, it's not for us to push a student to, to apply to any one of those specific schools that's attending, but rather to give them the opportunity to ask different questions about going to a new school, what it's like to be a freshman at a school, what kinds of things should they ask about. Um, in November, students really haven't made choices and, and um, it's a few weeks before admissions documents are due in most cases. And so it, it's, it allows them another, another time to think about what it is they're doing. Um, I mentioned that the head of school and I meet with families and then we also publish a high school directory. It's electronic. It has the links to over 70 schools, uh, local schools, but also boarding schools. Um, and it takes you directly to the admissions pages of those. And that's really helpful for families. So I think that's it, Val. Thanks, Jill. You yeah. spoke a little bit about shadow days and teacher recommendations and other aspects of the admissions process. Can you talk a little bit more about that and what that looks like for the high school application process? Sure. I can answer that question. Um, we, we highly encourage our students to um, experience shadow days. Uh, it's a great way for them to um, get inside of the school and experience um, what it would be like to attend. So um, Jill had mentioned that um, we kind of plan that out with families, make recommendations on the best days to take them. Um, because they will miss class here at St. Anne, so we want to kind of balance their time away. Um, and it's definitely um, a, a great opportunity and encourage that um, if they can go to any of the schools that they're planning on applying or have applied to um, and take advantage of that opportunity. 
Um, most of the teacher recommendations are done online, uh, which it's all done through a portal. So when parents are completing their applications, they can basically just um, select the uh, teacher they'd like to send the recommendation to. And usually it's their math and their language arts teacher. And students can choose to pick additional teachers they'd like to send recommendations to. Um, and so that's that's really the process. We encourage the students to talk to their teachers before asking them to complete the recommendation just out of respect and courtesy. So that's, um, that's one thing that we do talk to the students about. And then um, our registrar really um, is extremely intentional and works with the schools that our students are applying to. So she will get um, they, you know, emails from them or they will speak on the phone and speak about like, these are the students that have outstanding files and then she'll work on completing them. So it's very hands-on and um, you know, very intentional and she'll reach out to the families and just see if they need anything. So it's just been great. Thanks. I know it's a, a lengthy process and it's, it's helpful to have so many kind of arms uh, surrounding our, our students and our families as they navigate this. Um, I know several families inquire about merit scholarships and tuition assistance at uh, independent schools. Can you speak a little bit about what uh, types of things are offered? Sure. That's a really difficult question because different schools offer different things. So. Again, I'm gonna. I'll speak to this just a little bit, but I'll direct. Um, I'll direct those that are that are listening to this or, or watching to go visit the admissions site and look specifically for financial aid and separately for scholarships, because lots of schools have. They want St. Anne students at their school. They they want our students at our school and our previous over the years our previous record of our students for getting financial aid and for other merit scholarships and specific, sometimes it's a specific area of study uh, that those are also there. Our kids have done, our, and families have done very well with these. So I encourage you if, you've, if you've never had to think about financial aid or scholarship money, please please do think about it because it's, it's a way for them to bring students to their school that will um, add a robustness to their school and they love St. Anne's students. I'll speak to that in a little bit, a little bit more about, about that, the desire for them to have it. But I, I do encourage you to look at their file or look at their admissions sites. I would also encourage you to, to, to apply early. So if you're unsure about whether or not you're going to apply for financial aid or for, or for scholarships, whatever the reason that you're unsure, or maybe you haven't done it before, or maybe you're not sure if you qualify, or maybe you're not sure if your child's gonna to go to that school, I would still encourage you to apply. I think that it's a good idea because as you and your child go through this process together, the high school application process, you'll find that needs and desires can shift depending on what you learn and, and about the schools and about what, what you want and what they see and um, they don't even know what they don't know yet. So um, it's, a, it's just good advice. It's advice someone gave me a long time ago. And then, um, trying to think. Renee, can you think of anything else that I need to put, need to say about that? Um, no, I think just that the last, um, the last thing and, um, is that if you go on every website, you can kind of see what they've awarded in the past and um, usually um, the high schools have pretty large endowments. So they're like, as Jill said, it's better to really set your, set your sights high and go for it than to think, oh, you know, we, it, it's not possible for us. So that would be my recommendation. Great, thank you. I think that opens up um, more opportunities for families too. So, you know, don't go into it with a, a narrow vision, but, but really look at all of your options. Jill, you alluded to this in the last question, but as we wrap up our time here today, um, I wonder if you or Renee can speak about the preparedness of our students as they head into high school and any feedback that, um, that you've gotten from different schools. Yeah. Jill, you wanna go ahead with this one? Sure, sure, I'll go ahead. Yep, so um, as I mentioned before, uh, this isn't just my feeling. These are the admissions officers tell me over and over and over again, we love St. Anne's students. We want St. Anne's students to come. They, 
They want them for their intellectual prowess. They want them for their character. They want them for what they've learned and accomplished um, on the playing fields, in the hallways. They like how St. Saint Anne's students live our core values of respect, responsibility, and compassion. And we're intentional about not only living it, but also continuing to, to, to teach it and to practice it and to reflect on it to make sure that we're always moving ourselves forward. So, but we also have some statistics too. So we survey our students um, each year and over the years about 90% of our graduates have reported that they felt either very well prepared, uh, which was the largest chunk, well prepared uh, or prepared. So 90% of our kids are feeling prepared or better and most of that falls in the upper, the upper echelon of that um, when they go to their new high school. And about 80% of them are attending their first choice of school, which our kids tend to apply to several schools. And they just like, um, this isn't a college, um, this is not a college search process, but some of the same um, philosophies can be overlaid into this process in that many of our kids will apply to schools that they know that they could go to and be happy. And they apply maybe to a school, maybe a little bit of a stretch and then maybe even a dream school. And so they're applying to a wide range of schools and those, the stretch in the dream school could be for lots of reasons. Could be, you know, maybe there's transportation limitations or needs or there's financial needs or limitations or maybe there's a particular subject area or you know art area that you want to study maybe you're a dancer maybe you're an equestrian um, and so that could be a limitation in the schools that you look at but 80 percent of our kids are going to their first choice of school and 81 percent of our students are, are in at least one advanced class during their first term of their freshman year and that's significant um, entering a new high school for them to take a student who was not in their school and put them in an advanced class is a significant, that's a significant statistic. And that was only, the question was specific to their first term and, um, and they were in at least one. We didn't ask them how many, but, but 81% of them are in at least one for their first term. So I think that speaks a lot to the success that they feel um, as they go forward. So they're confident in their abilities and then that's proven true by what the schools are telling us also. Thank you. Well, thank you both for taking time to share with us. It's helpful to have a glimpse into the process as folks round the corner to the end of their time at St. Anne's. Um, if you are watching this video and are interested in learning more about St. Anne's and have a child um, for whom you would like to apply, whether it's starting off in preschool or in middle school or in, in any grade that you're looking to transition, I do invite you to come and see for yourself and come tour our campus. My contact information is on the slide that you see, my phone number and my email address and we are hosting on-campus tours. So please feel free to reach out to us and we hope to be able to meet you in person. Thanks again, Jill and Renee. You're welcome. Uh -huh, you're welcome. Bye.